and a minute or two. So I am Nicholas Diorio, and I'm an engineer at NREL, and I work on the SAM team. And today I'm going to talk to you about um, the SAM open source. So we recently open sourced all of the SAM repositories, and so we will go through how you can interact with those repositories and kind of um, where everything lives and how you can get started. Just not letting me switch slides. Okay. So this is a webinar that is in a series of webinars that we've done this year. Um, so we've done some stuff about um, CSP, PV plus storage, and sizing photovoltaic systems. If you're interested in any of these topics, um, please go and check them out on sam.nrel.gov. Um, all the webinars that we do are posted online, including the, the videos and the presentations and any materials that we use for the webinar. So um, th those are resources for you to get started. And here is the, the page where you would do that, sam.nrel.gov backslash webinars. And again, um, we also offer a informal bi-weekly meeting where you can call in um, every Thursday at 2.30 p.m. Mountain Time and interact with the SAM team if you have more specific questions. So we definitely encourage you to engage with us in that way if, if you need to. So today I'm going to be discussing a, a few different topics and depending on how much time we have, I will try to actually get into a, a demo of how you could begin to interact with SAM open source. But first, I want to go over some of the some of the more basic things, like why are we open sourcing? Um, will NREL continue to to do releases? Um, giving you an overview of where the various parts of the code live and how you can get started with them. What the license of SAM's code is. How you contribute to SAM. And then we'd also like to just um, to find out that there's a DOE um, information study that is out right now that's interested in how you use public tools. And so we're going to point you to that link. And then we'll leave about 10 or 15 minutes for um, questions and answers. So why are we open sourcing SAM? Well, SAM has been around for quite a while now, um, close to 10 years, and so we We've, interact, we, we've developed a lot of ways where users can interact with SAM, including um, an SDK, scripting, user interface, but we really felt that it was time to, to go the next step and just give people the access to the code um, so they could start building their own models, start um, doing additional research, and really just to um, engage the community. And so we think that it will offer increased transparency, flexibility, and collaboration opportunities. And again, we're really excited to continue to work on SAM and to foster a new community of contributors. So what kind of things are you going to actually be able to do with the SAM open source? Well, as you can imagine, you, you, you're going to be able to look at the underlying code of a model that you're interested in, understand like how that model works, whether or not you think it's working in the way that you would expect. You could change a way the model works for your own research purposes. So for instance, if you think that PV watts could be improved upon by adding more specific um, production estimates, then maybe you would go into the to that code and modify it. If you are in a different country whose utility rates are fundamentally different than the US utility rates, you might be interested in going into those models and adding your own application of how an electricity rate in your country should be applied. Um, and then for collaboration, you could work with the SAM team to actually add a whole new technology model. So if you're a researcher at a university or another lab or even work in a company and you want to model a technology that SAM doesn't have, like for instance, marine hydrokinetic or some other 
um, upcoming technology, you might be interested in adding that and working with our team to do that. Um, there's also a lot of interest right now in, in PV plus storage, and you might have a specific use case for your battery that SAM doesn't model. And so you could work with um, the SAM team or on your own go out and um, develop a new battery dispatch model. And just a quick pitch, we'd on the SAM team, we'd love to learn how you end up using the open source code. It really helps us tailor our efforts and and get funding to continue to develop the tool. Now, a big question might be, um, will SAM con or will NREL continue to do releases? And the answer is yes. We will continue to maintain and release official desktop versions of SAM. So the SAM team isn't going anywhere. We're going to be here supporting um, your development as well as all the, the great work that's been done in the past. And we're going to build the releases from the open source repositories that you now have the opportunity to um, contribute contribute to. And so SAM is going is going on as before, just with a new avenue for how people can interact with it. So with that, let's go ahead and quickly dig into what I mean when I say SAM. Because SAM isn't just one repository, it's actually a collection of repositories that uh, have different functionalities. And so I've created this, this stack that essentially has the layer of dependencies that SAM has. And so at the bottom, of course, you have your operating system, which we support Windows, um, OSX, and then various flavors of Linux. You need a C++ compiler on that computer. So in, in Windows, currently we're using Visual Studio 2013 Express. On Linux, um, the minimum GCC is 4.8.5, and libc is 2.17. And so you just need to have a C++ compiler and then the SAM graphical user interface is developed on the open source project WX Widgets, um, version 3.1.0. And so this is a framework that has all the things like um, combination boxes, um, all, all of the widgets that you use to interact with the user interface are derived from WX Widgets. Once you get above there, you get start getting into NREL libraries. And so, LK is a scripting language that was developed at NREL. Um, it's a very light scripting language that only depends on, um, on C++ standard library and can be tied to WX widgets. So, so that offers the scripting support that you see, for instance, in the SAM scripting environment. And then the WEX library contains custom widgets that have been derived from WX widgets for uses in projects like SAM and DView and, and other NREL projects. And so th those two libraries, LK and WEX, are fundamental to SAM, but are not what most end users would consider SAM itself. That really comes into the green boxes on top, which can contain SSC and SAM. So SSC stands for the SAM Simulation Core, and this contains all of the technology model libraries and the SAM SDK. So this is what most people would think of as SAM from the perspective that it contains all of the PV model, all of the battery models, the wind models, um, the financial models. So all of the implementation of those models lives in SSC. And finally, SAM, the SAM repository, contains the graphical user interface that you're so familiar seeing. So SAM is the graphical user interface that calls into SSC and actually runs your simulation and then displays it in, in a, a nice, nicely formatted way. So this is just a high-level overview, but should give you a pretty good idea for where you might actually be interested in looking at the code to start. I just really quick wanted to point out that on the team we have 
um, expertise in all of these areas. So if you're not quite sure where you need to get or where you should be looking to find something, chances are that someone on, on our team can point you in the right direction. Um, I won't go through this whole list, but suffice to say we have people that are very familiar with the PV model, the wind model, the storage model, uh, financial modeling, and then the CSP models. There are other models within SAM that are less actively developed um, as the technologies um, have, as interest has waxed and waned in them over the years, but we still definitely have people that can point you in the right direction. So where, where does the SAM open source code actually live? So it's on github.com slash nrel, and then simply the name of the, the repo that you're interested in. So LK, WEX, SSC, and SAM, these all live on github.com. And then I also pointed you to WX widgets because you need that in order to, um, to get started with SAM. And I also forgot one link, which is Google Test which is the test framework that we are in the process of getting integrated with all these projects. It's currently integrated with SSC, um, but you, you do need Google test in order to build SSC. And if you're new to Git and GitHub, I would definitely encourage you to check out um, guides.github.com or just Google how to get started with Git and GitHub. There's Lots of great resources online and that should help you get started. So another main question that you may have is, so this is great, you know, SAM is open source now, but what does that mean? What can I actually do with it? Um, is it an academic exercise or is it something that I could actually use to benefit my business? And so I wanted to go through some of these licenses in a little detail to help answer those questions. And if you have any additional questions, feel free to type them in the box, and I will address them in the Q&A section. But we definitely want to make sure that people understand how they can use the code. So LK and WEX are licensed um, under a different, in a different manner than SSC and SAM from the perspective that they are licensed fully under an MIT-type license. And so what does that mean? That means that really the only restrictions to LK and WEX are that if you re redistribute them in source or binary, you just have to reproduce the copyright notice, list of license conditions, and disclaimer. And essentially, there's, um, it says that neither the name of basically NREL or the contributors, i.e. the SAM team, would be used to endorse products derived from that software. So it's a pretty, pretty light license. You can basically take it and do with it anything that you want, provided that you uh, maintain the, the license conditions. You don't have to share back contributions or make any of the development public, though we certainly would encourage you to do so if, um, if you're interested. Now, SSC and SAM are licensed in a slightly different way. So they're licensed under a mixed MIT license and GPL v3 license. So commercial businesses can use SSC and SAM under the MIT type restrictions, meaning you can use SSC and SAM and software you develop for your business. You don't have to share those any changes that you make to SAM or SSC back. Um, you just, again, have to maintain the license in your code. But, but you, ha you have f fairly unrestricted access to use SSC or SAM um, to develop your business without any, any real requirements. Now, if you're a research entity, including a national lab, an institution of higher learning, or a nonprofit, you're, you are restricted under a GPLv3 type license which means that you can use SSC and SAM in your research, but you must make your changes publicly available. So you might be asking, well, why would you do that? The, the answer is that we really want to encourage companies to use SSC and SAM as a foundation for growing their business in a fairly unrestricted way. 
So we've got these years of research and development into SAM, and now we want to, to really make it easy for you to take all of that great work and and go make, make money, deploy renewable energy, um, and whatever your business is. And we want to encourage research institutions to share back any new innovations that you make or make them publicly available so that the whole community can benefit from that work. And so we see our, our role as a national lab to, um, to both help the private sector but also to encourage collaboration and um, additional, additional research. We want that to be publicly available. But yeah, definitely check the license out for yourself on um, github.com slash nrel um, on the SAM repo. You can read for it for yourself and just get wrap your head around it. So if you are interested in contributing to SAM, there are a few steps that you should take. So on, on the github.com repos, there are contributing instructions. The basic steps summarized for you are you need to send an email to me. Um, we'll probably come up with a better email address than just my email address, but for now, um, please just send an email to me agreeing to the contribution policy, which is outlined in the uh, on the GitHub website. And it basically just um, says that you agree to the license, you agree um, that there, there's some other things that but basically just means that you're agreeing to the license conditions. And then and it, as a next step, you want to scope your change and basically estimate how much time it's going to take. So if there are small, contri small contributions like bug fixes or things of that nature, you can simply submit those changes via a pull request on GitHub, which we will go through a little bit more, kind of what that process looks like. If the contributions are large, I would definitely encourage you to submit a description of the change for review on GitHub issues. And that way we can work together with you to just understand what your contribution is going to be and whether or not um, it's going to fit within the project goals. Um, so, so for instance, if you're like, I want to add an internet browser to SAM, we're probably not going to accept that pull request. Um, <laughs> and so, it just helps us, it, it would help save you time if you're really interested in getting your contribution into SAM and it's a large contribution. Just work with us um, to, at the beginning and we'll help you get, get started and get it planned. Um, of course, there's nothing stopping you from um, getting SAM, making your own changes, and just just using them. What does the, the actual technical contribution process look like? So first, you need to have a Git client application. And I've listed several popular ones here, Git Kraken, GitHub Desktop, or if you're old school and just want to use the command line, there's Git Bash. Um, on on GitHub.com, you create a fork for the repo of SAM that you're contributing to. Or I would actually just encourage you to fork every SAM repo because that gives you full read and write access on, on your local repository. Then you need to clone the fork and build according to, to the SAM instructions, which are on the GitHub wiki. You create a branch on your fork. Make your code modifications. Build and test SAM. So you're going to want to fix any compiler warnings that you introduce. We are aware that there still are many compiler warnings that um, exist that we're slowly working through. And we've already had some contributions um, from the open source community that have fixed a few of these warnings. And so we're very appreciative of that as well. Um, and then run simulations to test. So for instance, if you changed something in the PV model, you'd want to, to run the PV model and make sure that the results before and after don't change, or if that they do change, 
um, if that is an expected outcome. This number six step will become more rigorous as time progresses. As I mentioned earlier um, in the presentation, we are developing unit tests through the Google Test Framework, and we hope to continue to expand that repository of tests um, such that in an automated way, when a user contributes something to SAM, we can run the unit tests, see which ones failed or if they all pass, um, as a more rigorous quality assurance way to accept contributions. Um, but for now, please just um, do some manual testing. And if you're contributing to SSC, I would definitely encourage you, if it's a large contribution, to go ahead and write a Google test for that. Um, for that contribution. And finally, um, you commit and push changes to your own branch. I mean, and you'll be doing this as you go as well. It's really step eight when you start a pull request on GitHub. That's when when we would come into play where, where you're saying, please um, take the code that I've changed and include it in the official NREL SAM. So that's what that step will do. At that point, we would review your pull request and bear with us, you know, if you give a pull request and we don't get back to you right away, um, we are, you know, very, very busy, um, but we do, this is a very important process to us and so we do want to respond in a timely manner, but just bear with us and um, we will review it as quickly as possible, comment on it, and then hopefully merge it into the official version um, if everything looks good to go. So that's kind of a general outline of the of the, the process that you would contribute by. I also wanted to talk briefly about code quality. As I mentioned, we're in the process of getting a test framework set up. We'd like substantial new contributions to be included with tests and please fix any compiler warnings that you introduce. There are a lot of, a few different styles of code conventions in SAM currently, and so we, we acknowledge that, and um, we would eventually like to standardize on one convention, but for now, please just follow um, kind of a standard C++ coding convention, or if in doubt, just look at the, the SAM code that you're contributing to and try to stick to that convention. And for documentation, we'd also like you to comment your code. Um, reasonable comments, you know, if, if it's fairly obvious from the code, you don't need to comment every line, but comment um, substantial, you know, things that are maybe difficult to understand what's going on. Um, definitely comment your code and we'd also appreciate a brief um, paragraph or two of documentation describing what your new um, what your new contribution does, and this just helps us maintain the SAM help and make sure that it's up to date and um, benefit the entire community. So GitHub has a fairly nice issues tracking system, and if you discover a bug in the code or want to add a new feature or have a question specifically about the code, um, GitHub issues is a great place to communicate with us. So I have here an example of adding an issue. So in this hypothetical scenario, I'm su suggesting that um, I would like to add marine hydrokinetic to SSC. I'm basically giving a short description about what I want to do and how I, um, what I want the model to do and say that I'm not quite sure how to get started, so I wanted to touch base and plan how I can add this feature. So this would be an example of if you really want to add like a major new feature, not quite sure where to get started, that would be one avenue that you could approach. Or if you just open up SAM and it crashes and you have no idea why, you could raise an issue and say, I was working on SAM, I clicked this button, and suddenly SAM crashed. So that would be an example of a place where you would um, interact, 
interact with us. As you go through the process of building SAM and getting started with the repos, you'll notice that when you successfully build SAM open source and open it, there's a notice on top that says, please set up API keys, see private.h for details. And so essentially when we ship the public version of SAM, we have API keys of our own that are, are being used to do things like hit the utility rate database, hit the Google location service, or hit the, um, the Bing map location service. And so essentially you just need to go and set up your own API keys for these services. And these are outlined in private.h. If you simply open that file, you'll see links to where you can go and get these keys. And then you simply just copy and paste them here. Recompile SAM and you should be good to go. Um, the only note is just make sure you don't check your API keys into the private repo. It probably wouldn't be that big of a deal, but um, you just you probably don't want the whole the whole community hitting Google against your API key. Um, so now I think we'll have some time to actually demo some <clears throat> some things about how to actually interact with the user interface and how to edit it and how to interact with SSC, particularly how to debug a case. And so, so this will start getting more into actual how, like how do you actually edit SAM or how do you modify SAM's interface. And so if you open up SAM, your current version of SAM, and click Shift F7, you'll probably get a password It'll ask you for a password that you don't have. But in the open source version, if you click Shift F7, you'll be able to, you have full access on editing the user interface. So in this environment that I have on the slide, it, when you click Shift F7, you can control things like the order that, or the things that start up, like when you open a PV model, for instance, it tells you what pages are included in the model. Um, the user interface tab, which has all of the user interface pages that are included in SAM that we'll go into more detail about. It has information about the metrics table that is output when you run SAM, the cash flows, um, the, like the spreadsheet that you, de that you get from a SAM analysis, and, and so on. And so it has a lot of power for how you actually control what's going on in the user, user interface. Um, when you make changes to interface pages, you simply have to click the Save button and then the Startup tab and click Restart. But you just have to make sure there are no open cases. And once you do that, your changes that you've made in this environment should take effect. Um, before I jump out of, this, out of the presentation and into SAM, I really quickly wanted to pitch this study from DOE that is interested in learning how you use public tools and data. And so some examples of public tools and data besides SAM would be PVWatts, the National Solar Radiation Database, PVLib from Sandia. And so there's a lot of these tools and data that are out there. and um, if you could take just a few minutes and tell DOE how you use these tools and data, um, that could potentially be very beneficial. So thank you for your time and considering that. And so now I will go ahead and jump to Sam. Maybe. So once you download and build SAM, 
the executable lives in the SAM folder under deploy and then whatever platform you built it under. So if you built it under 32-bit, it would be under the Win32 folder. So if I click SAM.exe, I should get the open source version of SAM here. And it looks very similar to, to the official released version of SAM, just again with the API keys that are slightly different. And so if I go ahead and click Shift F7, this will open up the user interface environment that I described. And so I've clicked on the user interface tab. And since I spend a lot of time in the battery model, I'm going to click on the battery model. So the battery model is actually comprised of many pages um, for, for different parts of the interface. And again, the startup tab is what arranges them into the order that you see. So if I click on this current and capacity tab, you'll see that I have a form here that has different variables, different names, and then over on the right here you can see these variables. So when you click on one, it'll tell you what is displayed in the label, so the cell capacity, it'll tell you the units, these get placed on the right hand side of the, the, the widget. The group is used for things like the parametric analysis and, and grouping things by category when you're looking up, when you're looking up variables it'll tell you what the default value is and this default value does get overwritten depending on which which combination of financial model that you're using it tells you whether or not um, this variable is allowed to be parametric whether it's calculated or not so calculated variables are shown up they show up in blue. And if I can drag the screen up here, we'll, we'll show into how these are actually calculated and what's going on behind the scenes when you open SAM, when you load a page, when you change a variable value, what is actually, what is actually happening. So right, here we go. Just trying to get the windows. Might have a little trouble in this environment getting the windows dragged exactly to where you can see everything. But on the left hand side here we have what are called callbacks. And so for instance you'll see on load. So the callbacks are essentially just a way to handle user interface events. So when you open SAM um, and when the page loads, it will run this onload method. There's also on change events. So for instance, if I change the value of the bat Q full variable, which is right here. So if I were to change the value of that, this bat Q full change event would get run. And then yeah, so those are the two main events. And then everything else can just be a function that is called from when one of those events are run. And so that is really how the user interface is driven and, and how it is responsive to your input. So, so for instance, in some cases you could show certain user interface objects you could enable or disable user interface objects depending on the values of certain variables. And then on the right hand side, which I'm having a little trouble dragging over, yeah, it might be the screen resolution, which it, it's okay, it, it looks fairly similar. This side is the equation side, and so everything that is a calculated variable has to have some definition in the equations. And the MIMO simply means it's multiple input, multiple output. And basically every time you change an input variable to 
to the equation, the equation is recalculated. The way that you interact with user interface variables, so for instance, again, if I go to back Q full, the way that you would interact with the variable like that in the callback or the equation is simply to use this dollar sign bracket notation. So dollar sign bracket variable name equals something. And that, that's how you set those variables. And so, for instance, if I change the label to full cell capacity, spell it right, save it, I go to startup, restart SAM, minimize, start a project with the battery, scroll down a little bit, you'll see the full cell capacity. So that's just a really quick example of editing the user interface. Um, one caveat is that the files that these user interface forms live on are currently in a binary form. So they're not very easily diffable by Git. We are working on a way to, um, to make them text-based, which will make it a lot easier to, to see kind of what changes from one commit to another. Um, so that, that's one component of, of what I wanted to show you. Another thing that I wanted to show you really quick is so say that you have this case in SAM and you run it, you see the results and you're like, I don't really understand why this is the way it is. I think there's a bug. Um, how do I go into the SAM code and understand what actually happened? So to do that, you're going to want to run um, the SAM SDK tool with our debugger through SSC. And so if you click Shift F5, this code language generation box comes up and you can, you can actually export the current case in a form where you can easily read it into any of these languages. And so this is really handy if you have your own wrapper for SAM that you want to use. For now, I'm going to go ahead and stick with LK for SDK tool and click OK. And so I'll just put this on desktop and make a folder demo. Click OK. So it opens it up and you can see what it generates here. It generates a file with your case name. And if you open this up, it tells you, so here is the scenario that I was just looking at, except here's all the variables and their values and the code um, to Sorry, I'm not quite sure what happened there. Um, the code to read, read it into the environment of your choice. And so now if I go to my code environment, which is Visual Studio 2013 Express. So this is what the SSC project looks like. By default, the SDK tool is the, the startup project. And so if I just go ahead and click debug, it brings up this SDK tool. I can choose the SSC library that I want to use. And so this is essentially just the SSC dynamic library that, that we used to run SAM. We also conveniently copy that over for you um, when you do the Shift F5 code generation. So you can select that SSL or that SSC.dll. And then the script editor, you click and click open. And then you click that untitled.lk and it's brought up in this environment. And I've set a breakpoint in the battery model. And I'm 
and you can see in here, we'll see if it actually gets hit. I think it should, but um, it's possible that it won't. So let's go ahead back here, and if we just click Run, so now we're running SSC in the same in a similar way that Sam is running it, except now we can actually stop and see what's going on along the way. So it looks like my breakpoint isn't actually getting hit. <laughs> That's fairly standard for a demo, is to have something not not work quite right. But okay, so Sam returns successfully. It will tell you all of these metrics that it calculated. Um, not quite sure why my breakpoint didn't get hit, um, but let me let me try let me try one more time. Make sure that. Actually, got a battery. Okay. Maybe I will open up the PV model. So let me go ahead and click this one more time. And bring this up. And actually, um, my colleague Janine pointed out to me that I actually need to run the DLL from the SAM source repository, not from the code generation, which is an easy mistake to make, but it will it will get you. So here I have this um, SSC project that I've checked out in the build. VC 2013 X64 debug. There's this SSC DLL. So if I click open, and now if I click open and go back to my desktop project, let's add my demo and click untitled. We'll go ahead and see what happens. <laughs> Okay, so now we're we're somewhere in the battery model where it had a breakpoint, and you can see what the values of local variables are. Visual Studio has some fairly sophisticated mechanisms for going up and down the stack. If you want to look at the, what called this particular function, what the state was at that level, what it was at the level above it and so on. You can step through, see how variable values change. You can set a conditional breakpoint. If you right click and hit condition and say, I only want to look at this when i is equal to 4, and then click. Might not actually work on that level. Let's try it down here. And so now i is equal to 4. And so th there's a lot of, of different ways that you can step into the code and start to understand what is actually happening in the model and whether or not it makes sense. And so I, I use this all the time in my personal development of do, doing things like developing the battery model, for instance. And so it can be kind of a really quick way to see how things are working and whether or not they're working as you would expect. And so with this, I think we're right at about 15 minutes left. So I'm going to go ahead and say let's turn it over for questions now. We will have additional webinars, I'm sure, that we'll get more into detail on specific aspects of the code and how you'd interact with them. Um, so hopefully that was a, a good overview to get you started. The slides that I... Um, that I made will be provided for you as a reference. And I have 
some slides at the end that I didn't go over that we went over in the demo that should give you a little information about what I talked about. Um, so yeah, with that, let's go ahead and turn it over for questions. Thank you for your time. Thanks, Nick. Uh, this is Paul. I just wanted uh, wondered if you could spend a couple of minutes uh, on the GitHub um, website, just showing us around the various repositories. Yeah, absolutely. Link. That's a good point. I had it up, but I didn't actually bring it up. So if you go to github.com slash nrel slash sam, this is kind of the, where I would start looking. So you, you get to this website. It'll tell you if you want to submit a new issue. There's a tab for that. If you want to issue a pull request, um, there's a tab for that. The wiki is a great place to, to read over. We have detailed instructions on how to build SAM on Windows, Mac, and Linux. Um, there's some information about interacting with Git and GitHub, what software dependencies we have, and again, the contribution policy, which contains the email that you need to send before we can accept your contributions. If I go back to the main code, so, so this is the code, the main, the main code you can look through. Um, there's different you know, pieces, obviously, that contain things like make files. Um, we do use some libraries from Sandia that we're very grateful to use that include things for stochastic simulations. We have all of our resource files. For instance, our solar resource files. You can go and download those if you just want those. Oh, sorry. I'm on the main NREL GitHub now. And the last things I'll point out is is just the, the high-level descriptions and the links to the other repos. So from the SAM repo, we're linked. You can go get over to SSC, for instance, get over to, to LK. And so everything is linked together, and, and you should be able to, to quickly figure out where you need to go. So yeah, thank you for pointing that out. And another thing real quick is just um, we also do tag where the release commits are. So, for instance, our recent commit, of, or our recent version 2017.95, is tagged. So, if you wanted to check out to that exact point in time, you could do that. So, thank you. So thanks, Nick. I think if, if anyone has a question, feel free to raise your hand or type a question in the questions box. Um, if you raise your hand, we'll, we'll unmute your line so, so you can ask your question. Um, Bilal, I see you. you have your hand raised, so I'll go ahead and un unmute your line. Yes. Welcome, Bilal. Uh, hello? Go ahead. Uh, okay. Uh, my question is, actually, I, I'm using... Um, uh, I'm I just a beginner with Sam, so I, I'm just trying to. Uh, I'm using it, and uh, the problem is that oh, sometimes I get like negative values, and I really don't understand why why I'm getting those negative values. Uh, sometimes, uh, and more important question, second part is that I need uh, data for. Uh, I checked on all over the links they provided in NREL. I mean, like your uh, your on your website. But uh, if you ha if you can provide me some links, I can have uh, data, international data uh, about Malaysia and solar, especially in solar solar data. Thank 
thanks for that question. I think that's a general uh, SAM question, and I would direct you to the SAM website. Um, you can post questions, general questions there about getting negative values that you aren't expecting, and we'll answer them there. And there's also a weather data page on the SAM website that uh, points you to resources for, for getting weather data um, for different parts of the world. Um, so uh, thank you for that question, and, and we look forward to hearing from you on the support forum with more details about your, uh, the, the results you're seeing. Um, it looks like there might be a question that was typed in a little earlier that might be worth going over um, when you might want to use open source SAM versus the SDK that we also have available and what sort of the differences are there. Sure. Um, I would say you'd want to use the SDK if you're fairly comfortable with the algorithms that the SDK provides. So for instance, if you're not really looking to heavily modify the models that SAM currently has, and you just want a way to integrate the models with your existing desktop application, then the SDK is a great place to start because it contains the, the SAM stand, or the SSC standard um, API where you can access SSC and everything that SSC contains. If you reach the point where you decide that you need to heavily modify the models that you're using in the SDK and under finding that the um, the access points of the SDK are insufficient to allow you to modify what you need to modify then that's really where you'd want to um, start looking at the open source code and potentially changing the models and recompiling them either into an updated SDK or um, or into the SAM user application itself, but yeah, so it's it's really a scenario versus when you would when you're happy with the models that you have versus when you need to modify the models is how I would say. I think I think uh, just to follow up on that, Nick, an, another kind of way to put it is that the, the SDK allows you to run the S SSC DLL, the dynamic link library, um, um, without modifying it, so you you can interact with the with the DLL, um, whereas the open source project actually allows you to to build your own version of the DLL and make modifications to the code um, that, that that is opaque to you if you're uh, using the SDK. Yep, that's a great point, Paul. Not seeing any other hands being raised or, or questions asked here. I wonder if we could ask a question of some of the people listening then rather than the river. Um, if anyone has ideas of things that you're interested in doing with the code or, uh, you know, sort of things that have crossed your mind, you know, maybe the reason that you signed on. I'd be interested in hearing that as well while we have other questions coming in. So feel free to type that into the box um, or raise your hand. We can have a little bit of a short conversation about it as well. And then in the meantime, we've also gotten another question, um, just clarifying the difference between the open source version and the one provided by NREL. Sure, yeah, that's, that's a great question. <laughs> so. The NREL version of SAM is built from the open source version. The only differences in the open source version are that the open source version doesn't contain um, specific private information such as the API keys, for instance, some NREL logos, 
Um, so things of that nature, the registration, but in every way besides that is actually the same code that goes into the official public release. So when we build the public release, we're, we simply take the develop branch of the SAM repo and all of the associated repos with it, and then we build we build it and then add the NREL branding that makes it the official version or the NREL sanctioned version of SAM. But in every other way, they're identical. Nick, I think the other thing to add there is that, that um, NREL builds a version of SAM um, and that's posted on the SAM website. So that's a an executable. It's a it's a complete desktop application that's ready to run. Uh, whereas the open source project is just a code repository. There aren't built versions of SAM associated with the open source. Um, you have to build those yourself. That's correct. Yeah. So I'd say if you're an end user that's mostly interested in just using SAM, then the um, the NREL provided executables on the sam.nrel.gov website would be where you'd want to start. Um, and it's only really if you are interested in what the, the underlying algorithms of SAM are or if you'd want to start contributing to those algorithms, that's where you'd want to start looking at the open source code. Uh, this is the question about a PowerPoint, uh, I guess Janine is answering it, but uh, we'll be posting the PowerPoint presentation and a recording of this uh, session on the SAM website. Um, so yeah, if there are no other questions, um, we could go ahead and get wrapped up here. And thank you again for your time. And if you have additional follow-up questions, um, there's a few different ways to reach out to us. Just check on sam.nrel.gov. Um, but yeah, I'd like to thank Janine Freeman and Paul Gilman, who facilitated, and Stephen Janzu, who facilitated answering questions. and um, Again, you for your time, and we're really excited about the, the open source, and we think that it's going to be a great new way to interact with Sam, and we really look forward to getting to know you as a collaborator. So thank you very much, and I think we will go ahead and sign off. Thanks, Nick. And a couple of questions did come in, um, so I think um, I I'm happy to stay on for a couple of minutes just to address some of those. Um, I'll just type answers to those, um, but otherwise we'll stop the recording and, and call it finished.